Welcome to the Grace Story Podcast, where we introduce you to interesting people and their inspiring stories. From Grace professors, current students, and distinguished alumni, to special guests and speakers on our campus, you can meet new people and hear how they are impacting the world around them. This podcast is recorded and produced at Grace College and Seminary, located on the shores of Winona Lake in the great state of Indiana. This is the Grace Story Podcast. Today on the podcast, we're interviewing Jen Avey, Executive Director of Karis Women, where her goal is to see women serving and thriving in the local church. She is married to Scott, and they are both Grace grads. They, along with many others, have planted Grace Fellowship Church in Brunswick, Maryland. She's a pastor's kid, pastor's wife, so been immersed in ministry her whole life. Married for 22 years, she has three kids, one currently attending Grace, and very importantly, a boxer puppy. Jen loves math, and as a math nerd, has found her way to ministry, and so we're going to hear about that today. So you are a self-proclaimed math nerd. I didn't just call you that. I want to make <laughs> I was sure say you haven't seen any of my yeah, recent math work. Yeah, I was going to say I want to make sure I didn't so just I make know. that up. That was like in the bio as a self-proclaimed uh, moniker. So t- talk a little bit. Where you you grew up in ministry? Where did you grow up? What did that ministry context look like? Uh, my dad was a pastor, and so um, grew up in a bunch of different churches, kind of all over Illinois, Indiana, Ohio, and then landed in Fort Wayne uh, for high school. So Okay. What high school did you go to in Fort Wayne? Um, so I went to Homestead for my freshman year, and then Fort Wayne Christian. Oh, actually, wow. Yeah. All right. Is that now Blackhawk Christian, or does, uh, it, does no, that still exist? No, as... it does not exist oh, okay. anymore. Okay. Interesting. We weren't the last class or anything, but it... We were close to the last. All right. So then you you came to Grace and you majored in mathematics. So what was sort of your original thoughts on like, here is where I see my career going? Well, that's that's not how that happened. Actually. <laughs> okay. Okay. Um, so I I came to Grace and I was actually math ed. Uh, um, and my mother was a teacher, and I um, wanted to pursue that path and go into education and took my first education class my freshman year and went, nope, that's not going to be, that's not going to be for me. Um, And so I dropped the ed and just kept the math and kind of just moved forward with that, added a business minor because you had to, you couldn't just have a math major, you had to have a minor or a science. Added the business minor and um, went from there. Uh, Worked in banking while I was in school. Um, So that got to incorporate just my love of of numbers and things balancing correctly and everything kind of coming coming down to the bottom line. And so um, actually pursued more bookkeeping and accounting as I got out of school. So uh, has that been something that has stayed with you as a continued area of passion? Is just sort of like numbers and bookkeeping and keeping track of, is that still like something that's kind of stuck with you? Um, It has mostly because my husband is not as gifted in that domain. And so uh, even just planting the church and coming up with budgets and doing fundraising, my my math skills, go math majors, um, have come come in really handy in a lot of areas. I may have to repeat that one to my kids a couple times. Um, <laughs> when wa- will we use this? Yes, no, you yes. will absolutely use it And all my the wife time. is a teacher and she loves math. And so she's always reemphasizing that. This is going to pay off sometime. But now they do math differently. I'm telling you, I was watching my sixth grader no. do homework last night and I'm like, like, I, I don't know what you're doing. We're not talking about that. Okay, we're not going to go down that road. All right. <laughs> that's so, awful. <laughs> uh, tell us a little bit about your college experience at Grace um, and maybe a, a couple highlights, including meeting your husband, um, that you sort of remember from your time at Grace. Oh, goodness. Um, well, um, not to go too deep and too personal too quickly, but um, I actually really struggled my freshman year. Um, I spent probably the first couple weeks in bed. Mm. Um, I really don't remember much. Like I, it was really a hard transition for me. Um, and one of those kind of pivot change moments, um, a girl in my hall noticed me and she literally came in and was like, get out of bed. You're coming with me. And she just drug me around campus with her. Like 
your get up, we're going to do something. We're going to go here. We're going to go there. Um, and really just kind of helped me to, to make that transition and to kind of come, um, come out of a depression that I was in there and really to have some friends and form some relationships. So, um, that was just kind of my first step onto Mm. campus was a struggle, but then finding community and finding friends and finding people that really, um, would care about me and see me was really important. Um, Shortly after that, I did meet my um, my soon to be husband. We met our freshman year, um, and both of us were kind of wired more homebodies. Um, he was a music education major, so he lived in the music department, um, and I was, uh, you know, a math nerd. So um, we just kind of, you know, started hanging out, and we both just had the same kind of temperament and disposition towards just um, spending time together. Mm. And um, it wasn't long before that turned into, you know, Going home at night is a bummer. <laughs> yes. <laughs> it would be better if we could just stay together. Um, and we actually got married after our sophomore year. Oh, wow. Okay. So that, yeah. I <laughs> yeah, mean, that's, <laughs> um, but what a neat, I mean, neat story to talk about the beginning of your experience. And I think that's true for a lot of college students. I mean, I've shared with students a similar story for me, my freshman year of just trying to figure out your place um, and how you belong. And, so often we just need somebody to bring us along, and that's that's the beauty of the body of Christ. Yeah. Uh, okay. So you get married after your sophomore year. Did you? Where did you? Uh, where did you live your uh, last years at Grace as a as a married student? So there's a, actually there was a the little duplex like two houses down from the music building, what used to be the music building, yeah. um, and we ended up renting there, and so um, just kind of living a little bit off campus, but. Uh, yeah, he lived in. When I say he lived in the music department, those music majors lived in the music department. So music ed is a and worship arts now, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, which you know about that program uh, is uh, is yes strenuous to say yeah. the least. Um, so was ministry for you and and Scott something that was on your hearts even then in college of like you know as we see down the road we see ministry being something you know we want to step into or what was God's journey for getting you into uh, ministry together? That's actually something I'm going to be sharing in chapel this morning um, because that was the opposite plan that I had personally for my <laughs> life. Um, but being raised in a, in a pastor's home and having some injuries and some woundings there, um, I was not going to marry a pastor. We were not going to be in full-time ministry. I love the Lord. I will serve you. But that's we're going to do this not vocationally. Yeah. And um, I... I say, you know, when I met my husband, he was not a pastor. He was going to be a music teacher, um, and he's an excellent music teacher. And so um, as as we were just navigating the end of our college career, uh, he needed another semester for student teaching, and we found out we were expecting. So things were going to change and shift, and uh, graduating in December meant that he probably wasn't going to get a teaching position. Um, I think now any teacher can get any position any time of year, but back then you hired in the summer. Yeah. Um, so we had to pivot, and that pivot was just one year. Just one year he was going to do a music internship at a church. And, uh, and that one year has turned into 20-some <laughs> years. Uh, but that was, that was a, a journey of um, having to really wrestle with the Lord through some of that pain mm. and some of those fears and woundings, um, things that I had just said I won't repeat and I won't be in that environment and I won't raise my kids that way. And um, just a lot of no's that I that I put before the Lord, right. like I will do all of these things, but not this and not this and not there and not, and just his graciousness and his kindness to um, invite me into deeper trust there. And so stepping into ministry, um, again, was not something that was originally on the, the plan, um, even for him. But after being in ministry, he, he really felt like he needed to go back to seminary and pursue that um, pastoral full time. And so... We were we were in it and uh, along for the ride and have been serving um, together in various capacities since then. So, mm. so uh, talk a little bit then about um, Karis women and how you know this is a fast forward um, <laughs> uh, of a you know of a number of years, 
but how you first got engaged with Karis women, uh, what it is, and sort of eventually how God led you to be the executive director. Yeah, so uh, we ended up um, at a church out in Frederick, Maryland, and um, uh, Women of Grace is the organization previously. We've rebranded uh, to Karis Women, but they were putting on leadership um, summits and inviting women in local churches to come and kind of just have some training and some time of connection. And I um, got invited to one of those and um, still in that process of that journey, right? When we say no to the Lord and when we have wounding and pain in our past, it's not its not just some instantaneous like, oh, now sure. I just love ministry and I'm just right. going to give my whole life to it, you know? Um, it's like, I'm going to give my whole life to this, <sighs> right? Like, mm, still... Um, and so, um, you know, kind of stepping into an environment where women were asking other women to step up and like, what are your skills and your gifts and what do you see yourself doing? And I kind of hesitantly said, like, I think leadership um, might be in my future in some way. I kind of have these skills and communication gifts and I just... I don't know what the Lord wants to do with that. I don't know that I want to do what the Lord wants to do with that. <laughs> like we're in this wrestling time. And, and again, it was someone seeing me and kind of pulling me up and pulling me along. Um, uh, now that I say that again, maybe that's something I should, you know, put some more energy into. But um, I began to become more involved and see what other women were doing and how they were serving. And uh, the organization was filled with ladies who just wanted to love the Lord well, love his local church well, um, and see women connected to one another to encourage each other and spur each other on. That's exactly what they did for me. And so um, got to serve with them on the board for several years, got to oversee leadership development for a few years and kind of being that voice for other women. And uh, just a little over a year ago, our executive director um, retired, and um, and I was privileged to be offered that position and to be able to step into that. And so hopefully that, that kind of legacy can continue of um, finding women and building them up and encouraging them and whatever God would have for them, um, and just kind of helping them to develop that as they serve in the local church. And I know you and I came into leadership sort of at a similar time, and in fact, a lot of these ministries connected to the Caris Fellowship, the group of churches that we've been a part of as a college and seminary since the beginning, uh, have had you know leadership change across the spectrum um, over over really the last year and a half, and and you've been able to be a part of that too. All of us newbies like kind new of going like, now what are we in? doing again? <laughs> How does this work? Um, and at, but I think as you said, one of the things we're all so thankful for is that there are others. Uh, there are others who have come before, who are mm -hmm. pulling us along, who are encouraging and uplifting. And I mean, it's a very biblical story, but um, it's our, also been, you know, our experience as leaders. Uh, so talk about maybe some of the main um, things or actual activities uh, that Karis Women as a organization does for those who are in the, in the fellowship and beyond. Yeah. Um, so as we try to connect and equip women, um, we offer some opportunities to do that across the nation because we serve all of the, the, the churches in our area. Um, and so we've been doing um, those leadership kind of connection events, uh, leadership summits. We do training classes. We actually have a partnership with the seminary mm -hmm. where we do um, leadership development and um, Bible classes for ladies and churches. That's one of my one of my joy ministries. I love getting to do that and getting to teach. Um, um, just recently, we have stepped into offering women's conferences at a little bit of a larger scale and inviting in whole regions of churches to come together, opportunities to give women um, that platform to speak, to communicate, to do workshops, to share their ministries, to connect with other women in similar areas of ministries, and at the same time to serve the whole local body by building up the body of Christ as women gather together. So um, we just had, last weekend was our third women's conference at Grace Polaris. Um, mm -hmm. We were in Ohio. So just coming off of that and that I think moving forward as we just look at our heart and mind for ministry and all the different various areas of, uh, you know, that we um, see women developing and we're coming alongside of them to help them, those conferences seem to be a place where everything can kind of come into one place and we can really share and build each other up. Mm -hmm. So I'm, I'm most excited about seeing more things like that moving forward where multiple areas of ministry can come together. 
And we're thankful we get to be a part of that here at Grace. And shout out to Dr. Christy Hill. And yep. she's been very engaged and involved for a long time uh, with Women of Grace and, and now Karis Women. Um, I, I love the way that you uh, are so excited about equipping the next generation. Talk about, you know, even what you see, because um, we see it on our campus uh, with uh, with our students and and female students who who are on fire for Jesus. And so kind of what do you see in the next generation that you're excited about just being that person now who's sort of pulling them along? Yeah, and I, I would say that's actually a good picture. Um, and in some ways my my story is a good is a good picture of that 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 we need to be pulled along. Hmm. We need somebody to see us and to, to listen and to recognize and to kind of help pull us up and, and say, you're going to like, come on, we're going to do this. We're going to do this together. Um, and I see that as I get to talk with other women and work with other women in, in other churches is they need that. They need somebody to say, God is doing this in your life and mm. you are equipped for this. And in the areas that you're not, let's find equipping and opportunities there for you to grow and develop. And let's keep moving. Let's keep going. Let's not stall out. Let's not let fear and insecurity and maybe obstacles get in the way. But like, let's move forward because he has given us a task and a great commission to step into. Yes. And we have a part to play in that. So let's do it and let's do it together. Mm. And um Maybe it's it's overrated to say that people need to be seen and called out for that kind of stuff, but um, that would be my experience, that there are more women waiting in the wings, sitting in the seats, watching, waiting, feeling that nudge, wondering if it's something they could step into, kind of like hesitating and looking around. And for someone to say, come on, let's do this, is a really, really mm -hmm. neat opportunity, but you just see the spirit alive and moving in that kind of obedience. So you, you mentioned uh, a little bit earlier, you're speaking in chapel here in an hour and a half or so, and uh, have a, <laughs> uh, a son who's a freshman here at Grace. So you get that call, and I love to ask alums this, like you get that call and you're like, hey, would you come speak in chapel at Grace? And of course, right, you, you spent a few uh, hours in chapel yourself. What were some of your first like thoughts and feelings uh, about that? And then talk to us a little bit about what you um, hope to share or hope students get out of your uh, message this morning. Yeah, so like, that invitation <laughs> came, um, and my first thought was like, they don't know me. Oh, yeah, <laughs> they yeah. Don't. That, Th yeah. This could be a mistake, <laughs> I feel like. Um, but, uh, uh, and, and I'll even share again this morning, like that first impulse was like, well, I'll do what I do. I'll teach. Uh, we're, I'm in the book of Hosea right now, um, leading a, a women's series. I was like, I don't care if they like it or not. Like that's where the Lord has me in scripture. So we'll just, we'll just be deep into the book of Hosea. Um, but, but really trying to think like, what was my experience like? And, and I got a lot of Bible mm. and we got a lot of that, like, exposition and like, you know, deep understanding of scripture of which I'm grateful, which is, you know, part of what has fueled that now. passion yeah. yeah, that I get to do now. Um, but where are they really at? And, and maybe what's something from my story that I could share with them? Wow. And I'm not, I'm not as accustomed to sharing my story. Um, I would rather teach. I would rather be like, let's just stick to the word and what God has said, because I don't know that like what I have to say in my journey is all that significant, but, um, but God uses us for those things. So I'm stepping into to how he might use um, that. And so I thought about those moments where I had said no many times over. I said no to being an education major. And what am I doing? <laughs> yeah. I mean, teaching I'm teaching and educating, yeah. and educating and I love that. And that really was something that the spirit was doing in me. Um, but I was like, no, I'm not going to, I'm not going to pursue that route and I'm not going to do this and I'm not going to do that. And, and so really just even sharing this morning, um, hopefully with them about some of those things that we say no to from our woundings, from our insecurities, from our fears is kind of that greatest pathway of invitation to mm. saying yes to God and seeing him do something through us that is not of ourselves. Um, and so hopefully this morning, the takeaway will just be a further invitation and like calling out of um, let's let's say yes to what the Lord has for us and move forward in that boldly. And there's there's beauty there. There's there's pain and hardship there. I'm not I'm not one to mince words about that. Like ministry is brutal. Yeah. 
it is hard upon hard. Um, I saw it in my parents, right? It was part of the reason that I was like, that's not going to be a no for me. Thank you. Um, But our Savior is wonderful. And walking with him and in accordance with his word and his way is is beautiful and is worth it. And so to kind of call call the students into that more, like where might they be saying no hmm. and why? And how could they present that before the Lord with an invitation to trusting him more and saying yes? So hopefully so they will, we will hear more yeses well, and not yeah. more no's after I speak. <laughs> I'll look forward to being there and taking notes and learning some things uh, myself about uh, the value of saying yes, where sometimes our greatest pain points are and difficulties and uh, struggles are because, um, yeah, that's where we see God do his work. And then the only person we can give praise and glory to is God, because it's like, I couldn't have done that. I could not have stepped into that. I didn't want to do that. But God made a way where there didn't seem to be a way, which is which is who he is. Uh, so for those who might be interested in learning more about Karis women or uh, or you, what are what are the best ways for them to sort of learn more? Well, I'm not the most tech savvy, but there's a website and I have an email um, <laughs> and an Instagram. No. Oh, wow. Um, okay. Yeah, we're getting up there. Yeah. Um, but yeah, the Karis Women website um, is a great resource and there's links there to connect and, and contact. Karis is spelled C H A R I S. Yes. Kariswomen.com. Um, and that's just a, a great way to connect and to also just see what are some opportunities that maybe you could step into to connect with us and we'll pull each other along. And certainly, uh, uh, there is a focus on churches that are within the Caris Fellowship, but it's not exclusive in no. any way, shape, or form if not there are all. others who want to get engaged and involved and learn more. I would say the only exclusion is that it's that it's Caris women, and so the women is probably yeah, the more exclusion. Yes. I don't know how much help I would be uh, to the guys in the room, but uh, certainly to those ladies in the local church, we would love to come alongside them. Thank you so much for joining us for the podcast. Need to hear just a little bit of your story and how the Lord has taken you on this journey through lots of pain and difficulty to a place of being able to now pull others along in their journey. So thank you. Thank you very much. And thanks to all of you for listening to the Grace Story podcast today. Thanks to Rick and Avery for their work in producing the podcast. If you could like, comment, share this with others who would also be inspired by it, we'd love for you to do that. Feel free to send questions and comments to us at podcast at grace.edu. And until next time, live your best grace story today. 